Live from Washington, this is China 24. Welcome to our studios here in Washington. I'm Mike Walter. A big success for China's space program. A rocket carried a key component of China's new space station into orbit. And Ning Hong has our story. It's a major breakthrough. With the Tianhe, China's fourth heaven harmony core module brought into Earth orbit, China's space exploration has entered a new era. I'm very proud to be part of the Tianhe mission. This is a great success for China. The Tianhe core module is able to support three astronauts for three to six months. Upcoming missions to the module will include a cargo ship bearing supplies and a Shenzhou manned spacecraft, which will bring three astronauts up in June this year. By the end of next year, in-orbit construction will be completed and the space station will begin operations. The designed life of the station in orbit is at least 10 years, but with regular maintenance carried out by astronauts and with regular replacements of equipment, the station's life can be extended for some time. China is planning to complete the construction of its space station called the Tiangong or Heaven Palace with 11 intensive launches in 20 months. This will involve another two lab modules and four manned missions. The successful launch of the core module of China's space station marks the beginning of the construction of China's space station. It also opens a new era as Chinese astronauts will be routinely going into space. Ning Hong, CGTN, Wenchang. China has never been allowed to participate in the current International Space Station. That provides additional incentive for this new orbiting laboratory. CGTN's Wu Lei explains how China plans to use it. Here on Earth, an apple will fall due to gravity's influence, but in outer space, it floats like this. But how might this apple mutate in a microgravity environment? What might happen when an astronaut eats this apple? China has sent 11 astronauts into space since 2003. During their time in space, the astronauts have carried out a variety of experiments, but the time for each visit was limited. China is aiming to remedy this by building a brand new space station by the end of 2022 which is expected to remain in space for over 10 years, allowing astronauts who spend time there to engage in longer physical, biological, and cosmological experiments. As for experiments, Chinese scientists are interested in growing plants. These flowers and vegetables were growing from seeds mutated in space. The effects of living in space are also of concern for scientists. Knowing how to guarantee the ability for astronauts to have a healthy long-term stay in space could pave the way for future space travel. China's new space station won't just be for Chinese scientists, but also for global scientists as well. So far, a total of nine projects proposed by 17 countries, including Germany, France, and Italy, have been selected for the first round of experiments to be conducted in this new space lab. This new facility is expected to open up a brand new chapter in human space exploration. China is welcoming other countries to collaborate on these space missions. International astronauts are already working with China's space program. Some are even learning Mandarin. The director of China's manned space engineering office says the space station should be a place for global cooperation. We have carried out extensive exchanges with a large number of national and regional space agencies, such as Deutsche Aerospace, the Italian Space Agency, Aerospatiale, and Pakistan Space Agency. We and the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs carried out cooperation on applications concerning the use of China's space station. We signed an agreement. In the early stage, we jointly selected the first batch of projects to collaborate on. There are now nine projects to be participated in by 17 countries who have officially confirmed their participation in scientific experiments in China's space station. In the future, there will surely be foreign astronauts participating in China's space flight. The U.S. is not one of the countries China will collaborate with on the space station, but scientists here will still be watching China's progress with great interest. 
Leroy Chow is one of them. He's a former NASA astronaut who served as commander of the International Space Station. John Zarella has more. Leroy Chow knows more than a little about flying in space. It's a whole lot different than keeping your feet planted firmly on the ground. Uh, just the weightless environment, you know, the, you immediately feel full-headed when you get up into space because there's no longer gravity pulling fluid down into your lower extremities. As a NASA astronaut, Chow flew three space shuttle missions. Booster ignition and liftoff of Endeavour in pursuit of a Japanese satellite. He spent 36 hours walking in space. Never Houston free V. Leroy, we see you coming out. Ah, uh, Dan, look at the look at the Earth there. Take a look over the sill if you can. Oh my goodness. From 2004 to 2005, he commanded the International Space Station for six months. There was continual maintenance and upgrades. Chinese astronauts visiting their new station will deal with it too. Chow was concerned that because China has not launched a mission with astronauts since 2016, the learning curve could be steep. So their capabilities, operational capabilities, are, are not nearly as developed as ours, and uh, they've got a long ways to go, and by not flying for so many years, they're not moving the ball forward for themselves. So they're gonna have a big challenge once they do get their space station elements up of ramping up quickly to be able to support those kinds of operations when they haven't exercised their teams in so long. Exercising the body will be critical too. Every astronaut who ever flew a long duration mission has done it. Why? Space is not kind to the human body. Strange, sometimes debilitating maladies can occur. Over 70% of astronauts that fly these long duration flights have come back with some changes to their eyes. Some of them have come back with permanent eye damage and it's really not well understood. We actually do ultrasounds of our eyeballs, and that's in order to see how our eyeballs are changing, what's going on with the optic nerves. If Chinese astronauts develop this, there might be some backdoor note sharing between NASA and Chinese doctors, but not much else. The chilly relationship between the two nations has left space cooperation in tatters. A huge disappointment, says Chow. And unfortunately, when I left NASA at the end of 2005, I thought that in 10 years, certainly things were going to be better, and, and they're actually worse. They're actually much worse. For now, both countries are going their separate ways, but it's not a space race. The U.S. program remains, says Chow, far more advanced, and China has a lot of catching up to do. For CGTN, I'm John Zarella, Cape Canaveral, Florida. For more on the future of space exploration, let's go to Amitabh Ghosh. He's a scientist who's worked on NASA Mars missions for more than 20 years. Talk to us, if you will, about this importance of this uh, latest launch uh, that China just undertook. Okay, so this is a huge technological challenge. Um, so I, I know there is a lot of jargon here, but just think of what, what's happening in a space station. You have something flying 200 miles above us uh, it's going around the Earth every 90 minutes. Um, and in this module, you have to somehow maintain a habitable environment for astronauts and human beings. Huge, huge, um, uh, huge, huge deal. And this is the reason, this is a very select club. Not many countries have done it. So, so I think it's a very big technological achievement. And so what are some of the challenges uh, for this mission? Because as we heard from Leroy Chow, you know, in, in many cases, the Chinese have not put a lot of astronauts in space uh, for quite some time. So just talk to us, frame it for us, if you will, about some of the challenges facing China's space program with this. See, I don't think it's a big deal. There is always a learning curve and there is always hiccups. And ultimately, um, somehow, somehow things have a way to work out. Um, I think China obviously started this journey much later than the U.S. did. So obviously there's some catching up to do. But if you look at other facets, like the lunar program, um, China went from landing a rover on the moon to um, surviving a rover on the dark side of the moon to a sample return all within maybe 10 or 15 years. So there are ways to get past this, and I don't think that's a showstopper. Um, so it will be interesting going forward how this evolves. But at this point, I don't think there's any reason to think that this will not happen as planned. 
You, you mentioned the uh, effort to go to the dark side of the moon. Uh, that was very ambitious. Uh, they do have an ambitious plan. Give us a sense of perspective. How does this fit into the wider China space plan? See, see, China started this race much later than the U.S. They were maybe 30 years late, late to the party. So I think in a month or so, they are going to try to land a rover on Mars which is itself a very big achievement if it happens. It hasn't happened yet, but the or Mars orbiter has already happened. And the lunar sample return mission, which is a huge deal. So China has been able to return samples from the moon the first time after the Apollo program, not a, not a small, small measure at all. So I think overall, NASA, um, the, NASA has been progressing on different things, but China has been making serious headway and defining its own trajectory in space exploration. You heard uh, Leroy Chow and, and John Zarello's report talking about how disappointed he is about the chilly relationship between the United States and China when it comes to working together on space. Do you see a time when that might change? And talk to us about China's involvement with some of these other countries. They're, they're talking about 17 other countries being involved. Right. So I think geopolitics and um, international relations are terribly hard to forecast. Um, so it, it's very tough to know when it will be feasible and when not. And I, I don't think it's even disappointing that it's not happening. The reality is all these missions have international collaborators. China has a set of international collaborators. The U.S. has a set, set of international collaborators. And both will get there. So you have to just back up and see what's what what are we trying to do here? See, if you were in the early 1900s, going to the South Pole was a big deal. Today, there's a base there. People live there 365 days a year. So we are trying to do something in orbit like that as a human race and something on the moon, which is the next step, which Jeff Bezos and Blue Origins and NASA is thinking of next. So. We all live in a habitation module. Even in sitting here in Washington, D.C., we have air conditioning and shade, a shade, a different um, things which make us comfortable. In a space station, we, we need probably a pressurized vehicle. On, on the moon, you need something else, radiation protection. But can humans move from Earth to space? And that is the big picture. And I think different countries will get there in different trajectories and, and add to the human journey. Certainly a fascinating time for space exploration. Thank you so much for your insights. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.